My name is Harshita Gard and I'm a PhD researcher at the University of Leeds and today I'll be discussing a part of my research that is an intelligent approach for predicting the performance of repair concrete in a bridge in Northern Ireland from real-time sensor data. It is co-authored by Dr. Srijit Nanukutan, Professor Anthony Gaughan and Professor Mohamed Bashir. So Abercorn Bridge. It was built in 1932 in Northern Ireland using a Hennebic system for reinforced concrete structure. So over the years, it was in good condition, but however, with time, it started to show localized deterioration such as a spalling and cracking of concrete while uh, exposing the reinforced seal. Uh, it also showed that there was a settlement of deck slab and cracking in the entire expansion joint and thereby reduced the strength of the bridge. So therefore, this uh, bridge was repaired and the major patches were filled with shrinkage reduced uh, flowable concrete. In addition to that, the deck surface was uh, coated with a waterproofing layer while all the exposed surfaces were, uh, and co uh, were coated with water vapor transmissible membrane, uh, including the soffit area. During the repairs, uh, three sensors called septoports were installed to monitor the repaired concrete and check if uh, whether the repaired concrete would protect the steel reinforcement from corrosion. So review of sensors. So this is the expansion joint here and uh, I'll be discussing two of the sensors which I have analyzed, the, the data I have analyzed from. So first sensor, it was placed at 20 mm from the deck surface near the expansion joint while the second sensor was placed 20 mm uh, from the deck surface but away from the expansion joint. So uh, these sensors consist of uh, electrodes to measure electrical res resistance and thermistors to capture temperature measurements. Uh, they were oriented in such a way that they capture changes in electrical resistivity and temperature near the expansion joint. So this data was recorded for four years and two months and it was recorded every two hours uh, for 20 months and then there was a change in the frequency and we were capturing the data twice a day for the remaining period. Sorry. Uh, so uh, when we plotted this raw data from the sensors, it was seen that there were some missing data, uncertain and noisy information. Uh, in addition to that, with the increased amount of um, uh, data being uh, gathered, uh, there were uh, issues with handling, managing and analyzing this large data set appropriately in less time. Therefore, we come up with the uh, automated uh, SHM approach, which is applied to the data obtained from electrical resistance sensors and therefore calculated the diffusion coefficient for assessing the performance of repaired concrete in service. So this methodology is a five-step process where you um, import the SHM data, uh, that is resistance, temperature, and ambient environmental conditions, uh, explore it and pre-process it, uh, identify the missing information, clean the data, and correct the resistance measurements for temperature. Then um, AI-based approach is used. Uh, so here we have used piecewise linear regression. Uh, it is an amalgamation of estimation methods, unsupervised learning, and segmented regression. And the results we gathered from this approach are used for calculating the fusion coefficient and to predict the performance of concrete. So I'll be discussing this for uh, this AI-based approach further. Um, so this was the original raw data that we gathered. And you can see here that there were certain um, uh, the diurnal variations seen here. So this is because of a re the resistance uh, measurements were affected by the uh, environmental conditions. So with the increase in temperature, there was a decrease in resistance and uh, decrease in the relative humidity. So therefore, we used an Arrhenius relationship to reduce the influence of temperature on electrical resistance measurements and then standardize it to 25 degrees Celsius. So these huge fluctuations which are seen in the Sorry, it's not working. So the original variations which were seen, uh, the huge variations now reduced to standardized different images on both sides. Sorry. So now these standardized uh, variation uh, uh, data obtained, we have seen the huge fluctuations were not seen here in this case. 
So uh, overall, the resistance seemed to be increasing, but there were certain missing information. And uh, then there was a sudden decrease in the resistance. It was because uh, there was a first leak in the repair near the expansion joint. Once this part of the uh, bridge was repaired again, the resistance started to increase, and then there was a sudden increase in the resistance. And this was due to the change in the frequency that we changed from uh, capturing data to every two hours to twice a day. Also, the local areas nearby were heated up to get rid of the excessive moisture. But after that was done, the resistance seemed to be uh, increasing. So we have, uh, for further analysis, uh, where we have used the segmented regression approach, we are using the data after 700 days, where, which is a continuous data. Now to assess the performance of repair concrete, it was essential to discuss four parameters. That is, initial uh, rate of increase in resistance, the value of stabilized resistance, time taken to reach stabilized resistance value, and value of diffusion coefficient. So this automated clustering-based segmented regression approach is used. So uh, it's a machine learning approach where you select the variables that will be used for the analysis. In this case, we are selecting um, we are using standardized resistance versus time after 700 days. And you can see here that th this uh, resistance is seem to be increasing, but in certain set of clusters. So, uh, so uh, we are using now uh, an unsupervised learning, which is used to identify how many optimal number of clusters are there in the, this data set. For that, we are using elbow method and silhouette analysis. So in elbow method, the algorithm was run for different values of K uh, from 1 to 10, and uh, it identify how many appropriate clusters are there based on the sum of square. Then to cross-validate it, uh, silhouette analysis were used where um, uh, on um, initiating the algorithm, it identifies how well each data point fits into its assigned cluster, and then it is used to estimate the number of clusters in the data set. So in this case, we, were, we have seen that um, for both elbow method and silhouette analysis, it shows that there are three clusters. And this is the case for uh, one of the sensor at a uh, certain depth. And now uh, we perform piecewise linear regression, uh, which divides the entire data into k number of clusters that were obtained from the alg uh, earlier alg algorithms based on the changes in the slope difference. So once you combine all the predictions from all the models, we obtain this overall relationship, which shows that uh, each in each cluster we have seen there is a, a linear segment and uh, the intersection point of the linear segment shows that there is a change in the resistance. And th th um, the uh, equations for each segment shows that resistance is increasing, and the, for the final uh, one, it shows that it's almost stabilized. So the intersection point for the final two clusters and the regression line is considered as the time taken to stabilize resistance and stabilize resistance value. So uh, this algorithm was run for different um, sensor depths for all the sensors. And the insights obtained from the data analysis were that the resistance seemed to be increasing for all, um, at all depths. However, there was a lower increase near the expansion joint because of the water uh, that might be coming in from the expansion joint, whereas near the soffit area, the uh, there was higher increase in resistance because of the presence of water vapor transmissible membrane, which allowed the moisture to evaporate. Also, it took uh, more time to stabilize uh, away from the expansion joint at the maximum depth. Further, the uh, stabilized resistance values obtained from the analysis uh, shows that the uh, surface near the soffit is releasing more moisture. So the uh, stabilized uh, resistance value at 70 mm depth is the maximum. But if you compare both the sensors, you can see that uh, it is maximum near the, it is maximum away from the expansion joint, while it is lower uh, near the expansion joint. So these values then can be used in the equation d by d naught is equal to rho by rho bulk, which is used to uh, calculate diffusion coefficient. And the result shows that the repaired concrete currently is performing well. But if you compare the results of the fusion coefficient for the two values, it is seen that septopod 2 has a uh, lower um, diffusion coefficient uh, as compared to septopod 1. Therefore, it is implying somewhere that contamination, if the bridge, if arrives, it may arrive from the deck surface near the expansion joint. So finally, uh, the conclusions derived from the analysis were that the challenges that were 
identified in handling, managing, analyzing this large amount of data set demonstrated that there was a need to resort to this AI-based automated approach. So this developed automated clustering-based segmented regression approach is, uh, is represents, uh, represents very efficient and effective approach, which is easy to understand and interpret and provide some reasonable insights on the data and can be implemented on any kind of concrete uh, mix on any kind of, on certain amount of data starting from six months to so on. And finally, the values of diffusion coefficients, which are obtained were lying in the range of 10 raised to the power minus 12, which shows that uh, based on the review of literature, that it's a good quality concrete. And this uh, concrete, uh, repaired concrete is perform performing well and demonstrating the perform uh, property to slow the corrosion process. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Um, on the topic of the relative humidity sensors, are you talking about the internal relative humidity of the concrete or is yes. it actually external ambient uh, conditions? So it's both of the sensors. Okay. So um, if you get internal relative humidity sensors, we actually get the correct information whether, for example, in this case, we see that uh, near the software, uh, because of the breathable coating, the moisture was uh, evaporated. If we actually have the sensors installed, we know that, yeah, this is definitely, right now it's just, uh, our prediction that this must have happened, that's why it's, uh, the result says so. But if we have internal relative humidity sensors, yes, it will be definite. And uh, we need to have outside uh, ambient um, relative humidity sensors and temperature sensors as well to uh, correlate the data. Yeah. Got it. And I have another question about the clustering that you did. So visually, and I think one of your slides even kind of pointed this out, it looked like there was almost five clusters where you yeah. had the sort of flat regions and then it transitions yeah. into a slope. Um, but the algorithm says three, three seems optimal. So what's what's the algorithm seeing that we're not seeing, I guess, in, in that particular data? Is there like a penalty to having more clusters? So it sees the change in slope difference for each of the segment. So it runs number of iterations and identifies uh, uh, the change in slope difference for each cluster. And that's how it uh, gives us the correct. The, I mean, if we are doing it manually, we saw that there are five clusters, mm. but um, we don't know. So I tried to see change in slope difference manually, and it was impossible to find okay. the exact values. So that's why, I mean, it, it's providing the data. Right. Thank you. <laughs>